Hey everyone, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Last time we set up processing for Signalum and Lumium, which has since been overclocked to IV. With the Signalum, I was able to upgrade some more of these dynamos to increase power output, and I also added a handful more simulation chambers here, and this is the updated list. I mainly added more shulkers and also some more thermal data models, which we'll need today for nuclear craft. Speaking of nuclear craft, we also built our ore processing system last episode. This is going to come in huge today. Yeah, so our very first project for today is to upgrade all of these end steel energy conduits. We're getting to the point where we can no longer transfer enough energy throughout the base. So I want to skip Lumium tier and go straight to Signalum. I think we need somewhere in the region of 430. Let's go for 460. So as you can see right here, you cannot connect different versions of conduits together, which means this is an all or nothing process right here. We have to do all of these. And that topped with the fact that there's no easy way to do this either. I think we have to click every single conduit in the base. <laughs> oh, it goes underneath as well here. Oh boy, I did not make this very easy for myself over here at DML. <laughs> this is a very, very cramped space. 100% we miss a conduit somewhere. 100%. <laughs> it's just gonna happen. Oh, are we gonna be short? I think we might be short here. I think this is the last four conduits. We got more than four to go. That's alright, we can make a few more. However, this does take us up to a conduit storage buffer of 81 million RF. You can see in dark blue. Oh, and the AE system's offline. Oh, great. <laughs> it's probably filling buffers. I mean, unless I've missed a conduit somewhere. Told you. <laughs> there it is, right there. I told you. We need to connect this so that we can get access to AE and craft more. There we go. Alright, make me another 32 conduits. Yeah, 236 million RF buffer. All right, are things working? I see machines running, that's a good sign. I think we're back online, that's that's the main thing. We want to keep processing, keep processing materials. All right, so we now have a huge upgrade in terms of the transfer rate of power that we can manage around the base. From around 32,000 to 524,000, which I think can power an LUV CEF now. Yeah, we need some increased power production, not just transfer rates now. So our goal for this episode is to hopefully get our first reactor, and we're gonna need some infrastructure for this first. We don't want a reactor meltdown here, that is not going to happen. So these are, I think, the three things that we need to get this reactor up and running. We need the reactor materials, or in other words, to build the reactor itself. We need to build out some infrastructure to cool the reactor. And we also have to somehow fuel this reactor. So let's start with the reactor materials. There are some slow processing recipes that we want to get going ASAP. The first of which being yttrium barium cuprate, which we can get as small piles from rare earth. The dust that I can't say, so <laughs> I'm going to go back to calling it RE1. Import via conveyor. And when, oh wow, that is super quick. Wow. <laughs> so when we centrifuge this, we get a chance at small piles of cadmium, neodymium, cesium, lanthanum, yttrium, and cerium. Oh yeah, I guess they are small piles. Let's make a packager for these. Move all the drawers over a block. I misplaced my axe. Where did I leave that thing? I'm not breaking all those by hand. <laughs> is it in here? I have no clue where that thing is. <laughs> is it in this chest, maybe? No. Okay, something like this should work. All the centrifuged outputs get sent to this buffer chest. And we want a robot arm on the packager, which will transfer or supply exact four. Actually, maybe we should do 64, just to make it a bit more efficient, since they will package four at a time into dust. And then that we can just send up to a drawer controller and that will store them all in individual drawers here. Wow, that is quick, look at this. <laughs> Let's just make sure to lock the drawers and we'll do almost max storage upgrades. We'll leave room for a void upgrade if that becomes necessary. Yeah, so RE we get from processing redstone. I think it comes from the centrifuge, the cyclone output on the last stage. However, the yttrium, which is the reason we set this up primarily, we have to turn it into yttrium barium cuprate dust. And to do this, we're also gonna have to get some barium dust. So I've set up another electrolyzer here, which electrolyzes barite. Barite we can get from processing, I think, certus and nether quartz in ore processing. This also gives us some oxygen, which we just trash below. We get sulfur, and of course we get our barium dust. We'll put a void upgrade on the sulfur since we get this pretty much everywhere, and we'll just max storage upgrade the rest. As for the supply of barite though, I think we have around 1200. Yeah, we just dropped below a thousand. I'm not sure that's gonna be enough, honestly. We'll see, we'll see. We may have to process some more nether quartz today. 
Now that we have barium, all we have to do is put this together into YBCO, or Yttrium Barium Cuprate Dust. So we just need a mixer with copper dust, barium dust, and yttrium dust. This also takes some oxygen, so we have a fluid interface to supply oxygen. And we should be making YBCO here. Excellent, 13 at a time as well. The quest however requires us to have this in ingot form. And YBCO ingots are made in a blast furnace with tungsten steel coils. Before we set that up though, I am going to start to buy some diamond ore. Oh, only 64. Are we that poor? <laughs> that we don't have any coins left? I guess we have 400s here, we can convert that into quarters. Yeah, let's buy three extra stacks of diamond ore. And we are going to immediately start processing this through our processing system here. So we need this for its byproducts. Um, I think it's for one of the carbon alloys, something like that. You'll see it later on anyway. For now though, Yttrium Barium Cupri. Alright, we got our third EV blast furnace set up here. Very, very standard setup. All we need here is the Yttrium dust, and this gives us a hot ingot actually, so it goes into the vacuum freezer. We have to keep an eye on this thing to make sure that we're not overloading it. It seems to be keeping up alright. I think I think we're okay for the time being. I got the level limiter set at 512 right now. There's the ingot for the quest. And we're making a start on the reactor materials here. I think we also need this later on for some wire. Maybe an LUV, I forget. Alright, so if we check back at our quest here, we are also going to need something called boron. This we can get from borax dust, and borax we can get from processing salt ore. Yeah, I think salt or lipidolite ore. So that may also be something we have to throw through ore processing. You can probably see now why I wanted to rush that thing so badly. <laughs> oh, and apparently I didn't lock this drawer here. Yeah, so for boron we need one more electrolyzer here. And from this we get sodium and boron. We also get water and oxygen, which we, we just trash below again. We are getting so much oxygen now from this cryogenic air distillation tower. Yeah, we're at 14 million oxygen. I think we may have to set up an overflow even for this. Oh, we're capped on nitrogen. So this thing has been off for a while, I guess. Yeah, let's make sure we disable round robin here. And we want to set a low priority trash for nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. That way it shouldn't jam, but we should still be producing noble gases for all of the valuable gases that we actually get out of this. Are you back on? Yes, you are. Nice. <laughs> Alright, so we got boron. I think that is the last of the things that we actually need to set up processing for. Let's get some drawer upgrades in these. We'll void the sodium though, we don't need sodium. Which tier are we running alloy smelters at? These these guys are going to have a huge task coming up here. Alloy smelter 2s, are those HV? I'm stuck on the conyers again. <laughs> Man, that happens so often here. The reason I'm double checking the alloy smelters is because we need a lot of hard carbon alloy, which is made from diamonds and graphite. Let's put a recipe in for this at least. So the graphite we can only get from processing diamond ore. I don't think graphite spawns as graphite ore. I don't think that actually exists here. Oh, there is graphite ore. Graphite dust, we smelt to graphite ingots, we alloy smelt with diamonds. Was this always in the game? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to buy like 10 stacks of this stuff. Oh, let's get all this processed. It may actually just be worth smelting this, honestly. Because we only get carbon out of this. We don't really need carbon. Yeah, you know what? Let's just set up a recipe for ore to ingots. The other thing over here is ferroboron, which is steel plus boron. So then this is used, I think, to make tough alloy, which is to alloy smelt with lithium. How is our production of lithium, I wonder? 27k? Oh yeah, that should be plenty. I, I, don't ask me where we get that, though. <laughs> I really forget where we get lithium. We're getting it somewhere, though, and that's important. That's the most important part. Okay, so I've been putting in all the recipes here. I think I got everything. Let's see how badly we're in the hole for this reactor. So we need one controller block. Oh, already off to a great start, right? <laughs> I missed a recipe here. We can do this. Okay, second time's the charm. Here we go. One controller block. Eight active fluid coolers. I think these should be easy, right? Oh no, 72 ingots of tungsten. Yikes. Okay. 150 casings. Wait, why am I typing 150? Fishing casings. 150? Oh boy, that's another 300 tungsten. We need eight buffers. Eight buffers is another another 72 tungsten. Oh my goodness. And probably the worst part of this, 116 reactor cells. Yeah, that's 400 tough alloy at 15 seconds each. Well, I mean, we are able to request everything. These poor alloy smelters, though, are going to be tied up for hours. <laughs> well, at least we got the parts crafting. That kind of takes care of the first sign here. The second one is cooling. Actually, no. I'm gonna, No, let's do fuel first. <laughs> Fuel takes longer, so let's do fuel. Which is going to be placed where? Where exactly do we want this reactor? 
I don't want it anywhere that's going to block us in necessarily. So what we've got set up, let's just actually make sure this is the right cable. Yeah, IV. <laughs> so what we've got set up here is four igneous extruders. We give these a bucket of lava, they should all be producing granite. Just regular old vanilla granite, which we're going to output to the right. Where it's then going to be fed into four IV pulverizers, and this gives us black granite and thorium. Black granite is useful later on for, I think, chlorine? No, fluorine? Yeah, fluorine, which we need for some of the fusion reactor stuff. So we want to just buffer as much of this as possible. We got almost max upgraded drawers. Actually, we are going to put a void upgrade on black granite, since the thorium is what we're interested in here to fuel the reactor. So this first reactor that we build is primarily going to be for power. However, as you can see by the quest line here, there are multiple reactor fuel tiers, and we pretty much need all of these to reach the end game, and also unlock Scenarium, which can allow us to get processing arrays. Before we get the processing arrays though, we're going to have to do something a little bit ridiculous. And I think we're going to start here with 64, maybe... S How many should we do here? Yeah, let's start with a stack of MV thermal centrifuges. Can we make this? Oh, crafting CPUs, okay. <laughs> let's do 32 at a time then. Yeah, we can get 32 of these things. So yeah, this first reactor will run off something called TBU fuel. And TBU we can get from thermal centrifuge and thorium dust for thorium 232. Then we can 3x3 craft that into TBU fuel and run that through the reactor. So I think we're going to go here from the drawer controller into an item laser relay. And this we can send to all the thermal centrifuges. Oh yeah, of course, cable cone. So many crafting bottlenecks, although I did notice that all of our reactor is actually finished crafting here. I did not expect it to be this short. I mean, it has been a while, as you can see by the time. I took way too long deciding on where to place this. I, <laughs> I was going to put it over there, but no, we'll place it here, I think. Oh yeah, I think we'll also have to disable overclocks on these, for the time being at least. Oh, you know what? While we're over here, actually, I noticed ore processing had stopped. I think it's just run through everything. Before this episode, I did go ahead and plug everything in. I think everything we got filtered correctly. But we will plug in the input interface here and start requesting some of the ores we want to process. Like, for example, rutile, we want to keep processing titanium. Salt as well, that's that's another big one. We want to keep processing salt. I'm looking for tungstate and shelite. I don't think we have any of that left, though. Let's maybe send another three or four tier two microminers. Oh, we're missing brass, huh? Yeah, let's send two tier twos. All right, let's see about setting up these 64 MV thermal centrifuges. We've got two 16 amp MV CEFs here to power them. Oops, I went one too high here. All right, all of these guys should have some power. We need to give them all item lasers. And also link them all. I don't think there's an easy way to do this, to be honest. I think we have to click each one like this. <laughs> so many clicks. I'm not worried about trying to round robin these since, I mean, the recipe is 160 seconds at MV. And you might be wondering why we're doing MV machines. It's because we get a very poor overclock. And the cost of going any higher, both in terms of the machine crafting cost and also the power cost, just isn't worth it at this stage. I think we'll hold off until we have processing arrays to redo this step. So we have the input lasers. We need to take care of the output for these as well. And I think basically our only option here is to just do conduits up the sides. Extract on blue. Should we conduit montage this? Imagine all the clicks. That's going to take me like an hour. <laughs> so all of the outputs will be buffered into a drawer and we're going to place a crafter below this. Yeah, so the drawer buffers thorium 232 and we want to set the recipe here for TBU fuel. This should automatically pull from the drawer to make the recipe. I don't think we need the conduit connection here in the back. Alright, so this is what we send into our reactor. So we are, I think we're done for the fuel. We just have to let this run and build up enough. So that's the second sign down. Now we need to figure out how we're going to cool this thing. So there are different tiers of coolant that we can go for, but we are going to go for cryothium. You may remember that we are already producing cryothium over here, but I think for the reactor, since it's very important that we have cryothium available for it, we make it all separate. This time with the higher tier machines, I think we'll go for IV pulverizers. Yeah, just to future proof it. And we have an EV fluid extractor crafted for some reason. I guess we can use this. Yeah, so the coolant is going to look something like this. We're just pulling the items from the interface. We've got a crafter with some speed upgrades, although we may have to go up to the next tier, I'm not sure. We also pulverize the blizz rods on site here, since we want it to be completely separate. Although I think, to be honest, I'm actually going to request cryothium dust from the interface as well, so that if needs be, we can borrow from that system. 
But yeah, then we're extracted into molten cryothium, which is what we send into the reactor. We buffer in a steel drum and we have an ender tank, which we're going to place next to the reactor somewhere. So speaking of the reactor, let's not wait any longer. I think we want it facing this way so that we can have the redstone controls all within, contained within the same chunk. So it's going to be a 5x5 five five base, active fluid coolers in all of the corners. In the middle, we just put reactor cells. Second layer is all reactor cells. Third layer is also all reactor cells, however we have a block of graphite in the middle. Fourth layer is also just reactor cells. And the final layer should be the same as the first, with the coolers in the corners. Yeah, and we're not left with any cells excess, so I think we, I think we built it correctly here. Last thing is we want buffers on all of these active fluid coolers, at least one touch in one of these things. This is where the cryothium is going to be inserted to. We need our controller block, which I think can go here or here, and the rest is just casings. Okay, somehow we're left with 10 casings, but I think this is right. Do we have a multi-block? Yes, we do. Nice. Alright, so first thing, let's start with the coolant, just so that we can address any of these problems early. And I think we'll use the fluid lasers for this, actually. So, we can do ender tank on top of the reactor, fluid laser on top of that, and then just one fluid laser per buffer, I think. I think we'll need a compass to change the flow direction on this. So we want only into adjacent blocks, which means it won't pull from the buffer. And the one on the tank we want only out of adjacent blocks. And then just hook them all up with the wrench. Oh yeah, the buffer is already empty. <laughs> I mean, the consumption rate won't be this high, it's just because it has to fill the internal buffer first. I forgot actually to craft some reactor ports, let's make two of these things. So these reactor ports is how you interface with the reactor, so we can insert fuel into these things, i.e. our TBU fuel, and we can also hook up some energy conduits to this to extract the power. I'm not sure if one connection is going to be sufficient though, this can only handle 524,000 RF per tick. This needs to be given a redstone signal though. Nice! <laughs> awesome, and we are at negative 9,000 heat per tick, which is a very good sign. Once it runs through the fuel, it gives us depleted TBU, which we can centrifuge for a bunch of the other higher higher versions of the fuel. So I think for that, we're going to have another reactor port here. And just for the time being, we are just going to buffer this spent fuel. We'll deal with the processing of it later on. How much TBU fuel are we at? Not even two stacks, man. <laughs> Oh man, these things are so slow. But yeah, we want to set up some redstone logic so that it will turn off when it's full on power. That reactor over there will happily take all of your fuel and basically just void all of the power. So to make sure this doesn't happen, we'll move the controller up to this block, which should still be a valid reactor. Then we want to read a comparator signal. So from what I understand, this fishing controller will output a redstone signal based on its heat level or its energy level. I think whatever one is higher. Which in our case doesn't actually matter, because if we have high heat, obviously we want to turn this off. Although heat will never rise with this design. And if energy is high, then that will save fuel. So that's also a good deal. Anyways, then we're going to comparator into the side of this comparator. Item frame on the back of this block, with a stick inside. It's hard to say exactly what redstone signal this is given off, but it, it is definitely given a redstone signal. Then just extend the redstone along. Invert the signal with a torch. And we will add some delay on this as well. One more reactor port. You can also input redstone to the reactor port or the fishing controller itself. And I think we just send a signal into this. So yeah, this will just keep the reactor on if it's safe to do so. Alright, I think we're all ready to go here. Let's hook up another buffer here for TBU fuel. Eventually we want to be in a situation where we buffer excess fuel. And I think, to be honest, that will be the case considering we still have numismatic dynamos. So this will only run when we need to have power added to our conduit network. And from here, I think we can just go from the drawer straight into the reactor like this. Awesome, and we're producing 200,700 RF per tick, which actually is enough for the Signalum energy conduits. So the reactor is actually producing not quite as much of the, as these dynamos here, we're, we're making just under 300,000 RF per tick, I think, all of these combined. But this thing doesn't cost us any DML, I mean not any more than it costs to make blizz rods, which I think is way less than it costs to make us diamonds. Plus we're going to be buffering TBU spent fuel, and also the TBU regular fuel. So yeah, as you can see the redstone keeps this about half full. Let's actually add some extra delay on this, just to stop it blinking a bit more. And I think we're safe just to let this thing run. We have to keep an eye on the fuel levels, so I've set a little uh, storage monitor here for cryothium dust. This also won't be the last reactor we build. We we will need one for fuel processing, and we're, we're probably going to build a more powerful one as well. Maybe even two more, I'm not sure yet. But that's definitely not something we can afford at the moment. Aha! I knew I missed another one. <laughs> I wonder how long this has been bleeding redstone and coal. Look at this. I forgot Condi is here. Oh, that is tragic. 
Well, I told you this would happen. <laughs> so I was actually just over here, just to double check we were making enough snowballs. Oh man, we, we wasted so much coal and redstone there. Yeah, just to be safe, let's add some upgrade kits to this glacial precipitator. Alright, anyways, I think I would like to conclude this episode with trying to get the next year of circuit. So to do that, we need to process indium. Indium we make in a chemical reactor from sulfuric acid, purified galena, and purified sphalerite. These are two of the specific washed ores that we filtered out last episode. Although we do need some more sulfuric acid for this. And quite a lot of it too, we need four buckets per recipe. Our sulfuric acid here is made in an MV chemical reactor, if I remember correctly. Oh, looks like I did upgrade this to HV, but still, I think we should add a better way of producing sulfuric acid. So instead of using the water plus sulfur dust recipe, we are going to instead use three machines here. This is the fastest way to get sulfuric acid. So first of all, it's sulfur plus oxygen to give sulfur dioxide. Then more sulfur plus oxygen, pump for insert. This gives us sulfur trioxide. Then we can mix this in water, so we can place an aqueous accumulator here. I think we'll also need a pump for insert on this thing. It does automatically output, but it's, it's not as fast as the pump is. And we get sulfuric acid, much faster than doing it the sulfur plus oxygen way. Output this to a buffer. Yeah, I guess we'll also put a fluid storage bus on this. That means it can be used elsewhere. We use sulfuric acid in a couple of places. Then from here, we want another chemical reactor, which is going to intake our purified sphalerite and galena and another fluid interface for the sulfuric acid. So the inputs from this interface, I think will have to be on a robot arm. This makes us indium concentrate. One more chemical reactor here. Yeah, from here we want aluminium dust, which we should be swimming in. I, I don't think aluminium dust is going to be any problem. And is this one faster than this one? Do we need to buffer indium concentrate? I don't think that's going to be the case, is it? No, I think we're fine without the buffer. We can just go straight between the machines. So from here we get lead zinc solution, which we absolutely want to centrifuge for zinc dust. This will alleviate our bottleneck of brass, as you saw earlier with the microminer. Oh, and look, the reactor's got a little hat over there. <laughs> the ender tank isn't rendering. That's funny. Alright, so I think I got the rest of the processing for indium dust here sorted out. We got the fluids going into the centrifuge, which gives us all four of these dusts. And in fact, I think we will void excess the zinc, the silver, the sulfur, and the lead. And the rest will just max storage upgrade. And then the tiny piles of indium go into a packager and then straight into their drawer here. Although the quest did want nine tiny piles of indium dust, let's wait for that to build up again. This looks to be pretty fast, honestly, but I think the bottleneck here is actually sulfuric acid. So it seems that we did need the upgrade in the end. There's our quest for indium. And this unlocks the quest for qubit processing units, which do require another chemical reactor here with nano CPU wafers. However, wafers, as you know, is not something that we currently have automated. We're going to need to set up a lot of precision laser engravers for each one of the different wafers. And there is a handful of them. However, I don't think that's something we're going to get today. I think we're going to wrap things up here. Oh, nice. We're at 455 lumium. Yeah, that overclock was definitely worth it today. And maybe worth to overclock a few more of these blast furnaces even, now that we have the power overhead. But yeah, we got our first reactor built. The coolant seems to be stable enough. All seems to be well here with DML. We are finally buffering the ender pearls. But yeah, that is going to do us for this episode. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.